Hi, hello friends. Welcome back to our channel. So today we'll be seeing some interesting clinical ABG questions as well as its solutions. How an ABG plays an important role in the management. That aspect we'll be seeing in detail. So if you haven't watched our previous video on basics of ABG interpretation, go watch it out. Then come back to this video so that it will have a clear view of what we are discussing today. Let's go on. So yes, we'll brush up with the basics. Eight steps. First, pH, acidosis or alkalosis. Next, primary disorder, whether it's metabolic or respiratory. Next, calculation for compensation, secondary compensation. Next, analyze the compensation, whether it's compensated completely or partially or uncompensated. Next, if it is high anion gap metabolic acidosis, go find out its cause. If it is normal anion gap, go find out its cause. Last is the delta ratio interpretation. Okay. A 60 year old male patient, known case of diabetes, hypertension on irregular treatment, presented with unilateral leg swelling, severe leg pain and high grade fever for last 5 days. And presently his BP is 7050. Pulse rate 120, temperature 100 Fahrenheit, dextrose is 220. So on examination, severe tenderness was present on the left leg and skin over the swelling is erythematous. Peripheral pulses were palpable. And ultrasound venous Doppler was done which was normal. And kidney function test, urea was 160, elevated way too high. Creatinine is 2.0, which is also elevated, suggesting some uh, acute kidney injury picture. Next, LFTs, AST, ALT, both are elevated in hundreds. And bilirubin is also elevated, which means liver abnormalities are also going on. Next, D-dimer was normal. And with a normal venous ultrasound, which means deep venous thrombosis is ruled out completely. Now they are asking the ABG interpretation for this is. High anion gap metabolic acidosis with compensation due to DKA, with compensation due to sepsis, without compensation due to DKA, without compensation due to sepsis. Yeah, so let's approach systematically. First, let's see the pH. pH, if it is less than 7.35, yes, 7.20, so acidosis. Next step, metabolic or respiratory. Check for the bicarb, is it less than 24? Yes, it is less than 24. So it is metabolic acidosis. So next third step is analyze for the compensation. Since metabolic acidosis, compensation will be PCO2 expected is equal to 1.5 into bicarb plus 8 plus or minus 2. So here if you apply 16 as the bicarb, 1.5 into 16 plus 8 plus or minus 2. So that will come around to 24 plus 8 plus or minus 2, the expected PCO2 will come in the range of 30 to 34. What about the given PCO2? It is 30. It is well within the compensated range. So it is analyze the compensation. Fourth step. It is completely compensated. So it is a simple ABG disorder, not, not a mixed disturbance. Next step will be calculation of anion gap, which is sodium minus bicarb plus chloride. Sodium is 135 minus bicarb 16 plus 100 so this will come around to 19 so 19 and normal anion gap is 8 to 12 it is more than 12 so high anion gap metabolic acidosis is happening we can tell it paka. then what to do is next just look for the options is it there is there a need to calculate delta ratio or not they are just asked Hagma due to DKA or sepsis with compensation or without compensation. So we can stop our problem at this stage itself and we can analyze the question now. In the question, if you see, it's a type 2 diabetic patient. It's rare for DKA. Next is dextrose is 220. It's not that way high to cause DKA also. Okay. Anyway, we should be checking urine for ketones and blood for ketones, but still, We'll check for the sepsis causes. 
See, the patient with unilateral leg swelling in a diabetes is more towards cellulitis. Cellulitis and DVT should come to your mind if they tell if they tell of unilateral leg swelling. Here they ruled out DVT by giving normal D-dimer and normal ultrasound venous Doppler. So only choice is cellulitis. Cellulitis is there causing high grade fever which means sepsis has started to happen. And also if you see the patient's uh, kidney function tests are deranging. He is going into AKI as well as liver functions are also deranging. And also BP is in the lower range, hypotension, which means the patient is in sepsis and septic shock with multi-organ dysfunction, kidney, liver, multi-organ is getting dysfunctions. So all these are happening. We can detect with this ABG. So next question will be, what is the management after seeing these reports? Option A will be, enjoy strict dextrose control give bicarbonate loading dose and inotropes for BP or start him on empirical antibiotics, give fluids, then inotropes and surgical debridement when needed. C. Start him on insulin infusion, antibiotics, inotropes. D. Is start him on thrombolysis. Thrombolysis will prefer only if it is DVT. It's not DVT. Next is they have given treatment for insulin infusion uh, will be given only in DKA. It's not DK. So the most appropriate answer will be start him on empirical antibiotics to cover the cellulitis part and give him fluids because in sepsis initial recitation should be fluids. If it is not responding, then only you should go for inotropes. Next will be surgical debridement because the focus should be removed. Infective focus should be removed. Okay, that's. So that B is the option. Next problem. A 27 year old alcoholic took locally made alcohol and was complaining of blurring of vision, having two episodes of seizures, his pupils were dilated, present patient sensorium is altered. ABG revealed the following. Now your ABG interpretation is high anion gap metabolic acidosis with compensation, without compensation, due to ethanol or methanol. So as per our steps, first is look for the pH. It is 7.15, less than 7.35. So acidosis. Next step, look for the bicarb. Is it less than 24? Yes, it is just 6. So metabolic acidosis. Step 3, compensation. How to compensate? P expected PCO2 will be 1.5 times the bicarb plus 8 plus or minus 2. So bicarb is 6. So 1.5 into 6 plus 8 plus or minus 2. So the answer will be 17 plus or minus 2. So it will be like 15 to 19 range you will get. Expect uh, given PCO2 is 17. So it lies within this range. So it is completely compensated. Next. Next analysis you have done. It is completely compensated. Fifth step is anion gap calculation. Sodium minus bicarb plus chloride. Sodium is 145 minus 6 plus 100. So it will be 145 minus 106. So 39. So it is more than 12. High anion gap metabolic acidosis. Next, find out the cause. See the question now. Actually, locally made alcohol is one clue you can get from the question. And one more thing, blurring of vision. And alcohol causing optic neuritis and blurring of vision is methanol. And also if you see the patient KFT is deranged. Kidney failure, acute renal failure happens in methanol toxicity. So all these indicates it is due to methanol toxicity. So one part we found out with ABG, other part we found out with the history and uh, investigations. Next question, how to manage this patient? After seeing this report, A. As the ABG shows severe acidosis, give bicarbonate correction alone. B. Protect his airway, intubation if needed, give fomipizole. C. Same steps with hemodialysis if necessary, immediately. D. Give just fluid recitation and bicarbonate correction. So, how to approach this? See, in methanol toxicity, Whenever the patient has 
high anion gap metabolic acidosis or the patient develops blurring of vision due to toxic neuritis okay it is irreversible and also if the patient develop any acute renal failure like KF, not deranged kfts here in these conditions you should go instantly and start hemodialysis to save as it is life saving for this patient at this stage so abg plays a vital role in diagnosing this thus the answer to this question will be protect his airway as he is altered intubation if needed and give fomipizol as it is an alcohol dehydrogenase inhibitor and also hemodialysis immediately as the patient has all features of methanol toxicity next question a 60 year old chronic bd smoker presented to the emergency with breathlessness and vomiting his relatives told he uses mdis metered dose inhalers previously his abg showed the following ph of 7.5 pco2 80 bicarb 32 abg interpretation is nagma with respiratory acidosis hagma with respiratory acidosis respiratory acidosis with fully compensated met alkalosis or with over compensated met alkalosis let's see it step by step first is ph ph is less than 7.35 acidosis next step is pco2 is more than 40 here so it is respiratory acidosis okay next compensation how to calculate the formula it's acute or chronic see it he has presented with acute presentation so for every 10 mm increase in pco2 there will be 1 milli equivalent increase in bicarb so from 40 pco2 has increased to 80 which means 40 has increased so bicarb from 24 will increase to 4 units uh, so it will be 28 so is it next step is analysis of compensation is it 28 no it is more than 28 meaning it is over compensated okay yes so why is it over compensated see the history once more breathlessness and vomiting is there vomiting means hcl is getting lost from the body meaning alkali is getting added that contributes to extra metal closes so the answer will be d respiratory acidosis with overcompensated met alkalosis okay what's your next step in management a intubate the patient b nebulization iv steroids bipap ventilation and then intubation c same but cpap ventilation d is nebulization steroids diuretics and then intubation what do you want to go so in this if you diagnose what is the diagnosis COPD patient since the patient is using uh, MDS frequently and is having nebul uh, breathlessness now so it is COPD acute exacerbation contributing to respiratory acidosis why is metal closes vomiting okay so how to manage this acute exacerbation first you should give IV steroids morely uh, hydrocortisone will be giving and with nebulizations will be giving like a beta agonist with budicot steroid so the steroid enhances the beta 2 receptor sensitivity so that the beta 2 receptors agonist will cause bronchodilatation and relieve the bronchospasm and prevent the accumulation of pco2 in the airways okay yes next if it doesn't uh, respond then you go to bipap ventilation by level positive pressure meaning this bronchospasm happens more during expiration so during expiration you are giving a positive pressure and preventing the bronchospasm collapse of the airways in happening so always go for bipap ventilation if that doesn't work out last step will be intubating the patient okay this is the sequence of steps in any type 2 respiratory failure due to acute exacerbation of copd so the answer will be b 80 year old diabetic male operated for bladder cancer had diversion procedures done recently now he is having severe abdominal pain nausea and rapid breathing his vitals were bp 90 60 
respiratory rate 29, SpO2 98, dextrose 520. His ABG is given below, pH 7.2, PCO2 27, bicarb 14. Your ABG interpretation is normal, nagma with compensation, hagma plus nagma with compensation, hagma plus nagma without compensation. Let's see. First, check for the pH. Step 1. It is less than 7.35 acidosis. Next, see for the bicarb, it is less than 24, 14. So, met acidosis is happening. Next, compensation, 1.57 to 31. PCO2 is 27. It is completely compensated. Nice. Next, anion gap calculation. Sodium minus chloride plus bicarb, 140 minus 110 plus 114, uh, 14. So it will be 16, which is more than 12. High anion gap metabolic acidosis is happening. Next, delta ratio calculation. Delta ratio, if you calculate, it is change in anion gap by change in bicarb, which means change in anion gap from 12 by change in bicarb from 24. So, anion gap here is 16, 16 minus 12 by 24 minus 14. So, it will be 4 by 10 which is 0.4 which is less than 1. If delta ratio is less than 1, it is hagma plus nagma associated. Okay, yes. So, can you tell why hagma and nagma is existing in this patient? See, for Hagma, we listed those of the cause, cat mud piles. In that, if you see in this patient, having dextrose of 520, that high dextrose and severe abdominal pain, nausea, rapid breathing, Kusmal's breathing, all these are characteristic of diabetic ketoacidosis. And also, the patient had a history of bladder cancer for which diversion procedures were done. This is a cause for normal anion gap acidosis where we found out RAD so may D it is fitting diversion procedures so this is coexisting so the answer will be nagma plus hagma with compensation C okay next same question what and all to do after seeing this ABG first insulin stat correction inotropes for hypotension B urine and blood for ketone Start insulin infusion without potassium correction and aggressive fluid recitation. C. Same thing but with potassium correction and aggressive fluid recitation. D. Urine and blood for ketones. Start insulin infusion without potassium correction and inotropes. Inotropes. Okay. Yeah. How to proceed this? See, here we have found the patient is having diabetic ketoacidosis. So, how to uh, find out that diabetic dextrose is it high or not yes it is high keto for abg check for blood ketones as well as urine ketones acidosis check the abg ph so if it all is fitting then it is dka how will you start managing dka is a medical emergency you should be aggressively resuscitating fluid first before giving insulin okay even though the uh, dextrose is very high First, you should aggressively resuscitate fluid and wash out all the ketones out of the body. Then, uh, then you can start with insulin infusion. Like uh, always insulin infusion, you should start with potassium correction. Check for the potassium value. If it is between 3.3 to 5.2, go start always with potassium correction. Then go find the cause of decay, why decay is happening in the patient and treat that cause. Thus, the option for it is C. Urine and blood for ketones start insulin infusion with potassium correction and aggressive fluid recitation. Yes, that's it for the day. Hope you found these solutions interesting. These questions are made in keeping with the in INICT in mind. So, it might be tough for some people but Believe me, prepare for these type of difficult questions so that ABG calculation becomes really easy and it's a must-know topic when it comes to NEET as well as INACT. All the best. Take care.